central coast of New South Wales, Australia, it's the number one podcast for the X-Men animated series. This is Generation X-Men with Bender and Brooksy. Oh, Captain Cap- Marvel. Captain Marvel. Marvel, because it sounds better. So before we start, are we allowed to talk about Captain Marvel? Uh, why wouldn't we be? Because we're both male. We're both <laughs> white. <laughs> We're both not 40. Yeah, so I think as long as Brie Larson doesn't hear about this podcast, I think we'll be okay. Well, should we just link her just in case she's an <laughs> X-Men fan? <laughs> I don't think she is. Look, a- a- any Brie Larson fans who don't want to listen to two 31-year-olds talk about Captain Marvel, this is your warning to turn off or skip to the end now. <laughs> but anyone, <laughs> if anyone is like, I'm sure she, she doesn't care what we think. We are allowed to talk about it, allowed to make jokes about her. Because her performance is the is what I thought was pretty uh, consistent and good in our Captain Marvel. Just the yep. thoughts off the top of my head. Uh, we saw it separately. You saw it. Uh, was it opening night? Saw or it opening night. Opening yeah. night. How was the crowd packed? Yes, packed. It was pretty. Yeah. Every time you go to those sort of ones, it's there's always seats, mm. but it's 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 busy. You get. I like to hear the reaction from the crowd. That's partly why I I like. So like slash hate those things. If yeah. they're, they're, it's good to get a gauge on what the audience. Yeah, that's what I like to get. Yeah. If there's roars for the action or big laughs for the jokes, but mostly I'm sat next to the bonehead who's snoring or choking <laughs> on a piece of popcorn <laughs> for two and a half an hour. <laughs> Put it down, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's what I always remember about Infinity War was the first time we saw Captain Marvel. There was a cheer from the crowd, just from the little logo. No, when when Captain America. Sorry, Captain America came out in Infinity uh, War. Oh, through the shadows from and the catches shadows. the spear. Yeah, there was a cheer Ooh. from the crowd. And I'm like, you don't get that when you're sitting like three weeks after the movie came and there's 10 people in the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> Which is how we used to watch every movie when we were kids. Yeah, that's right, yeah. It was always like five of the people in there and we were throwing jappers at them. <laughs> we were the assholes that I hate now. There were 10 blokes sitting at the back of the theatre, mm. hassle and faithful. I'm, I'm, I'm at the front of the theatre now. That's how I've... Oh, yeah? I've, I hate sitting up the back. The screen looks too small. <laughs> My TV at home looks bigger than this. <laughs> so I sit right, not right up the front, in the front section, back row of the front section. So that's looking massive and I can get that cinema experience. But most of the time I see it during the day because I don't want to be irritated by other people. Not irritated, but I sort of know what's going to get cheers or not. But uh, what were your thoughts on Captain Marvel? Uh, so how so- did you find it? Well, to kick off the movie, we start with the Marvel credits, and they're oh, all the Stanley yeah. cameos. That's nice. So I thought that was a nice touch to start with. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we see the Kree members of the Star Force. Ah, yes, that's which right. included that um, Korath from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, that's we'll right. That's right. Uh, the Skrull Talos. Mm. I'm a big fan of that guy. <laughs> you remember, don't you? Hey. <laughs> hey? What? Oh, Benny Mendelssohn. Ben Mendelssohn. Yeah, you know, uh, before we see Ben Mendelssohn, I think we see uh, the scroll, right? He's talking. Yes. And Ben Mendelssohn has a very unique way of talking. Even without his Australian accent, he's got a really low tongue and it sort of rolls around like that. I was like, geez, he sounds for me. He sounds like that bad guy that's always the bad guy. I wonder if it's him. And then he shows up as Nick Fury's boss. Like, it is him. But he sounded different before. What's going on? That voice that yeah. got to me straight away. Yeah. What do you think I've uh, gone, gone back to with that voice? Um, what, the scroll voice? Ben Mendelsohn's voice. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Animal Kingdom? I don't... Malcolm. Vertical oh, Limit, from baby. Vertical Limit. <laughs> That's what I went to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I didn't even make the connection because I didn't know it was Australian to begin with. All right, like, yeah, yeah. what is this accent he's doing? And then before he start, when he really started getting into it, hey, he's just doing his Aussie accent. Yeah. This is neat. <laughs> and instantly made me like him, but now he's like the... <laughs> Now you think vertical limit from Malcolm. <laughs> I can't remember any of his lines. Give us a smile, doll. It's the second best thing you can do with your lips. <laughs> <laughs> We're in. <laughs> What's the one? Oh, what? There's only three bombs. Won't everyone want their own bomb? <laughs> we have to share. See, I forgot that was him in vertical <laughs> limit. I only remember his brother being the other Aussie. Cyril. Cyril! <laughs> when he gets blown up. That's so good. I love that. 
That is a great movie. I use use that line with me and my brother. How he goes, we could always tell us the difference because I'm the shy one. I'm the shy one. I say that all the time. But what's the line leading up to that? If he can't do this, he he's does like it. a dog. If he can't eat it, he tries to eat it. If he can't eat it, he tries to uh, root it. If he can't root it, he, he pisses, pisses on, on it. <laughs> that was the line I was going to quote back to you. But I thought uh, having Ben Mendelsohn as a scroll using his native Australian accent as the scroll creature made it so unique to me. And maybe because we are Australian, yeah. I connected with that character more than anybody else in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, I hope he survives. And you're like, oh man, I hope he is the good guy. <laughs> it, was, it was interesting how they did that. Maybe you would have seen it coming, but they did so well to build up the scrolls as the sneaky, shape shifting bad guys. Yeah. And I only know them from Fantastic Four as being the bad yeah. guys. So I was 100% believing the scrolls are the bad guys. In and this. I was just waiting for that double cross to happen. I'm like, oh, wait, they're the good guys? Where's this double cross coming? They're the bad guys. They, they, they can't be the good guys. Mm. And then it never came. And you're like, they are the good guys. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> I was hoping, oh, maybe all the scroll survivors are Australian. But no, they all had different accents. That's like, right. Ah, that's Which just... I thought you'd enjoy too, because you're always talking about you like to have a lot of different accents in the movie. Yeah, but not if they're all Australian. <laughs> <laughs> More Australian characters. But yeah. I was happy that the the scroll didn't set the scroll characters didn't sound like your typical you know the bad guys are generally British and yep. the aliens like the dark elf in um, Thor number two I think he just spoke with a regular British accent so why is British the sort of go to evil guy. voice bad guy voice there but I thought Australian was a neat and it was really cool that Marvel Studios let that happen because there would have been I imagine there would have been some resistance. To having an Australian accent because we we've got a pretty goofy accent there, yeah. But uh, because the quirky the character himself is pretty quirky, he's drinking a, 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 a was it a, just a Coca Cola through a sippy straw or whatever as he's saying the line. I thought oh, that's a really quirky maneuver to have there. Also, a callback Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction, yeah. The nineties nostalgia in the movie. How did you respond to that? Big because I was there for most of it, that felt weird to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the eighties nostalgia that happens in movies. Ah, oh, that's neat. That's old. That's retro. That's cool. Nineties. I was there for that. I'm not gonna bug out because there's a blockbuster video here. So yeah, we could get more of that in Dark Phoenix. Oh, I think because Dark Phoenix is such a dark story, I don't think they'll lean into that sort of thing. Right. Can Captain Marvel blow Arnold Schwarzenegger's head off? In the true life true sort lies, of standout yeah. thing there. And I don't think Dark Phoenix is going to do that. It's going to blow the head off a Terminator 2 stand. <laughs> but that would be pretty neat. But yeah, all the all the 90s stuff. And I remember seeing a video on uh, YouTube of Kevin Smith um, being very emotional because his Mall Rats uh, yes. script was being read by Stan Lee. It's got to be the best Stan Lee cameo, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he should have done proper lines from the movie instead of Excelsior. I said, your friend really interested in the sexual organs. <laughs> Why is that not in the I middle of Brody. the movie? That would have been sick. Oh, man, bro. It I'm was just... a tie for me and Hugh Hefner once. <laughs> but that would have been cool. But yeah, it was a neat little cameo there. Well, there's also, they're calling the flurking goose instead of Chewie in this one. So yeah, that's more Top Gun than Star Wars. Mm-hmm, that's right, yeah. More 90s. Uh, can you explain to me why Marvel <laughs> was working on a light speed engine run by the Tesseract when the Tesseract itself is a like a, a teleporting device. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> why Why does you want to slow the Tesseract? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> that does not make sense, Mr. Drax. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and uh, was it uh, Captain Marvel's, her powers come from the Tesseract, right? Yes. So yeah, she destroys the ship that's powered by the Tesseract. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that gives her her powers. Mm, and uh Later on, I think it's towards the end of the movie like that, the um, goose coughs up the Tesseract. Yeah. They're not going to explain how it ends up in... Ah. So but, if, uh, the timeline confuses me. So 1940s, they find the Tesseract in uh, Nazi-occupied Poland and then uh, Red Skull does all this thing with yeah. it. Then it gets lost in the ocean. Yeah, so it's in the ship with... Um, Captain America going down. Mm -hmm. It burns through the bottom of the ship, goes into the Arctic. And the arms grab it, right? Yeah, that's when Tony, Tony Stark's, Stark's dad, dad <laughs> yes, finds it. I can't remember his fucking name. So then he gives it to S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, okay. And then S.H.I.E.L.D. have it 
until she borrows it from them to do this work. Oh, okay. So she borrowed it from Shield. Yeah. Okay. So then, then the Flurkin has it back <laughs> at Shield. So he coughs it up. Guess Shield go. Oh, that's where the Tesseract went. Mm. Put it back, and then yeah. So it's still there for when. They start screwing when, around when, when Hellwig, for, what's his name? Stellwig? Stellwig? Whatever his name. I can't remember that sort the, of the, name. The Thor Doctor guy yeah. is mucking around. Screwing him. around for <laughs> Avengers. He's screwing around with him. <laughs> Keep it locked up. <laughs> the Kree and Alpha Flight. Yeah. And they're trying to figure out who they are. One comes off as the sad, serious, heartbroken person they would be. They're also immortal or really low old. And then Captain Marvel who seems to be very casual and jokey about most of about the situation they're in. Why do you think Wolverine's so upset with losing his memory, being lied to constantly, and Captain Marvel's so happy about it? It's simple. He's older. <laughs> He's older, you reckon? He's 200 years old. <laughs> He's just more cranky. He's just more cranky. Yep. Um, what do you think about... Uh, uh, Brie Larson as Captain Marvel in this because I really enjoyed her. Yep, I didn't mind her at all. There was no problems with her. Yep, whatever. Mm. I thought she was very, uh, I thought she was very good in the role. I think the only thing that didn't make sense to me was why she was, uh, so I don't say jokey or quirky, but you know how I think she's a smart ass, like all yep. the characters are like Tony, Tar- Tony Stark's smart ass, Star Lord's smart ass, she's a smart ass, but. Her smart assery doesn't seem like it's coming from a place of character. It yep. seems like she's just saying that to be a smart ass. Like when she bl- when Nick Fury's mucking about trying to break into the thing, she just blasts it, and I think she has a funny line in there as well. It's like, ah, I don't know if she needed to say that. Just shooting it is funny. You don't need to say it, put a joke on top of it as well. Um, Nick Fury, how he loses his eye. That was gets, my next point. <laughs> gets scratched out. What do you think of that? Uh, I don't know. I, I did, I was, uh, if there's one thing that is a real low note for the film for me, it's that. I did have higher hopes for that, yes. Because you remember in Winter Soldier, which is one of my favourite MCU yes. movies, takes the patch up, you got to keep both eyes open. The, oh, badass moment. And if we connect that, he got scratched out by the cat. You're fucking kidding me, aren't you? <laughs> Last time I trusted someone, I lost an eye. You trust the cat? Yeah. But they're building it up like he's just lying about it. And so maybe creating a fake story is going to be more impressive than the cat scratching it out. You know what the other wormhole YouTube stories for this? What's that? Is that he is a scroll. Oh, really? And so (laughs) basically he did die in um, Cap 2. And then the scroll can't. There was two of him. Yeah. That's why he was always everywhere. Yeah. And so the real one got shot and killed by Winter Soldier. Oh no! And then the new one is the scroll. Talos. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh, and it's not. It's not Talos. It's the other one. There's four. Four scroll come to Earth, mm. and then oh, I don't know whether I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> one of them gets gets killed. He's the one that went into Coulson. Yeah. And then they did the autopsy on him. Uh, the second one's Talos. He takes off at the end in the ship. The third one is the one she fights on the train. Mm-hmm. Then there's a fourth one. It's the one that's killed by Jude Law in the barn. That's it. That's the fourth one. The, mm. That's the science guy. Yeah. The science guy gets killed. <laughs> so, yeah, the one she fights on the train gets away mm. at the end. Okay. So, yeah, that there's only one that they sort of show that they didn't show back on the ship at the end. Mm. So that is one of the theories going around that Nick Fury's a scroll. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I don't know if I like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I really didn't like how he lost his eye. But we'll find out on Endgame. I'm sure we'll find out on Endgame. Little things to that I, could, like I can uh, pick at as being um, what I didn't like about is most of the action sequences whenever they're fighting hand-to-hand. Yeah. It seems obviously stunt doubles to me. Right. So, like, when they're training in the morning, stunt double, stunt double, stunt double, they get into an arm bar, the actors jump in. Yeah, yeah. Say two lines and maybe do two punches. Then stunt double, stunt double, stunt double, get into another arm bar, say two lines, or they get knocked to the ground. Right. To me, it's like we've hit... And they're always saying in the... um, 
in the promotion for the film. Oh, well, Brie Larson trained so hard doing weights and action choreography for six weeks. You can't see any of that in the cuts. I mean, the camera's moving around. They're doing flips and stuff, and you can't see their faces. To me, it's like, have you not seen The Matrix? Yeah. Have you not seen that a training and dialogue scene can be done when Morpheus is fighting there, and you can see it's them doing it and not 20 stunt doubles <laughs> filmed on the back of their heads? <laughs> Put on a movie that is from the 90s and you'll see what the action can be done. Because uh, I was looking into a little bit of um, the behind the scenes and what inspired them, what movies inspired them because it's set in the 90s. They said they watched a whole bunch of 90s action movies and that's the action we're going to replicate. I didn't see any action in that movie that reminded me of an action movie I've seen in the 90s. Like, the thing that comes to mind to me is the car chase when they're chasing after the train. Yeah. Cameras whipping back and forth. It looks like there's a lot of... A uh, lot of shit whizzing by. You can't really see, follow what's going on. That's the opposite of what uh, techniques they used in 90s action it's movies. It's not Lethal Weapon. It's not Lethal Weapon style. It's not True Lies. It's not Terminator. Those, those are the big action movies. And it's not Die Hard 3 either, you know? There it's was nothing, baby. There's nothing in there uh, that reminded me of 90s cinema. And um, I don't like... that's if that If that's behind the scenes stuff, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hold that against the film. But I don't like how they promoted it as being a 90s action movie. That's that's not what a 90s action movie looks like to me. But overall, I thought that was... It was an okay sort of flick. The uh, soundtrack? Soundtrack was good? Oh, yeah. The one that stood out to me was uh, Nirvana's Come As You Are when yeah. they were in the another Matrix. When she was jacked into the Matrix thing. You know yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that was a Matrix reference, but you know when they go into the training simulation in the head when the, the tubes go into the back of her head. It just hints with the do 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 do. I, I just I was I was hit by it. I don't know if I like it or not. The, There's some other songs there. I can't remember any others. The the final fight scene where she's fighting the Cree mm. and they play that no doubt just a girl. Yeah. <laughs> One of the um, videos that I watched said that it would have been better if they used "You Ought to Know" by Alanis Morissette because <laughs> it's like a breakup song. <laughs> and I'm here. <laughs> that song to remain and in this video that they would actually, have been real cool they actually did it and it sounds really cool it's like that would look pretty sweet <laughs> yeah who originally come up with that idea because that works in the context of the story exactly too. yeah uh, a breakup song I'm here to remind you what's the song they actually use uh, I'm just a girl yeah yeah the, the message in that song not that great either but um that's a great that's so, yeah, that's a bring great, that up that's that is a cool. great fix, actually. Also, the Avengers Initiative came from Carol's call sign. Oh, oh yeah. Was it was was the original uh, initiative? He was going to call it. He, he he backspaced it. I can't it, remember because it's it was not stupid. Be, uh, the guard, uh, guardians or something. It no, wasn't guardians. guardians. It was something stupid. Protectors or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Wasn't backspace. A, it wasn't Avengers. Avengers. Backspace. 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 Avengers. So all up, all up, for me, it started really slow. Mm. It took it took a while to get into it. There was a lot of talk about Cree and crap that <laughs> on a second watch for me is going to be annoying, I think, until uh. the second part of the movie <laughs> where yeah. there's more Talos, more more of that sort of stuff mm. that I enjoyed. Yeah. The start of it's a bit of a drain for me. Mm. Talos is a bloody steam sealer. <laughs> there are a few of them in some movies. Like you see that, oh, well, he's he's... 100% of eyes are focused on him. When's he coming back in the movie? For me, he was like a scene still. So, geez, I hope he doesn't die. I hope I get some more scenes with him. If he gets a spin off, I'm in. Yeah. The tickets are pre sold. I'm in. In for sure. It uh, did make me come home and watch um, Vertical Limit. <laughs> Vertical Limit is doing its job. Even though they die, stick. I still love that movie. Yeah. Go watch Vertical Limit. Everybody go check it out. Do yourself a favor. <laughs> it's a classic. <laughs> Ah, uh, um, what did you th the other things the uh, internet was talking about is the uh, de-aging of Nick Fury yeah, yeah. and the de-aging of Coulson. I thought the de-aging of Nick Fury was good and so did I think on uh, Coulson. Uh, a lot of the internet saying that the Coulson de-aging wasn't very good. Did that blip on your radar? Not at all. At all. Not at all? Yeah. No. The, so, those sort of things, they don't really bother me in these things. I think they've really mastered the de-aging thing. Yeah. I think the only thing I'd give it away is that when Nick Fury's kneeling down to pet the cat, it took him a while to get up. You could say he's got a bad knee, or because he's actually 60 years old, <laughs> and it's hard for him to get down on one knee and pet a cat. I'm only doing this once. I only got one <laughs> taking me, motherfucker. 
And um, the other thing, the whole sort of uh, female empowerment. Uh, yeah, that's it's very run, big. Running throughout. Is, yes. Did that be a bit on the nose for you? Like she's always falling down and then there's a montage of her getting up every time. Yeah, that, but I expected that coming into the movie. Mm. I knew that was going to be there, so it, it didn't. it didn't... It didn't annoy me, mm. but I knew it was going to be there. So. I think it's unfortunate because it's all part of the character, and if it happened to any, if the character was a male, it would fit in the character of just standing up. If you fall down, get up. You know, Bruce, why do we fall to get back onto our feet again? And it's it just becomes on the nose because this is the first female superhero uh, movie for Marvel. Yep. It become a moment that should be nothing to do with gender becomes about gender you know women yep. standing up for themselves being stronger than who you think you are um i wouldn't it would have fit in perfectly with any other film and just it's just getting extra unfortunate extra attention in this as sort of the we are marvel we're pro women as well sort of thing which i think's a bit bit harsh you know mm -hmm. what i mean it also didn't help the brie larson with that quote yeah i don't care what men think of me so it really come across as a no, super feminist movie, but I I thought it was fine. That's the least last thing that was on my mind. Uh, they didn't kill the bad guy in this one either. They sent Jude Law into space, right? To speak to Thanos or something, right? So we can assume he probably cut his head off anyway. Because <laughs> <laughs> was he working for Thanos? Or was he just working for the Kree? Yeah. Okay, so Kree probably cut his head off and <laughs> fired him that way. Or would you rate it? So we did a little bit of a breakdown on Captain Marvel. What'd you rate it? I don't know whether I can rate it. You don't know whether you could rate nah. it? Nah. I'd give it a 6 out of 10. Yeah. It's not one I'd rewatch. I'd skipped all the Talos bits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? For all the people I asked at work, they, they were most excited for the post credit scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How she fit in. And what they, they're spinning around the beeper. Uh, three of the Avengers are there. Um, Scarlett Johansson... Cap. Cap, War Machine. And, um, Banner. And Banner. And she just shows, shows up and says, where's Fury? Yeah. And that's it. That was the mid credit scene. The post credit scene is the cat throwing up the Tesseract. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that was all it was. Hey. The uh, post credit scene for Airman and Wasp was more shocking, more, whoa, okay, oh, that's They're cool. all gone. <laughs> right. And he's stuck in there. How's I, he going to get out? I liked that one better than this one. This mm. one was like, oh, yeah, it sort of had to happen. Mm. Didn't really add anything. Mm. So, do you reckon you'd rewatch this one much? A bit, uh, a bit um, Guardians Volume Two to you? <laughs> no, not Did that high. That one, yeah. yeah, but I, I think I'd watch this one more than I would say Black Panther. Mm. Black Panther really didn't, didn't do, do it for me. Didn't do it for you. Nah, nah. It's, it's not a bad movie, but it's not a rewatchable one for mm. me. So yeah, I'd, I'd say that's about the same. 